Hey guys, um, normally I don't talk about this kind of stuff, but I, I kind of wanted to mainly because there's something that is slightly being talked about with this whole thing that not many others are talking about because obviously with Concord everyone's been talking about a lot of the other factors, um, whether the imagery, the, uh, the social justice aspect of the game, the mentality of the studios and how they were projecting themselves and the devs, all that. That's not where I'm talking about here. I'm talking about quite probably, in my opinion, as a developer and even just as a person of, of a creative media, the biggest thing that you need to accept is criticism. You need to accept when you could have made a mistake. You have to accept when you could do something better. And sometimes it's tough love. That's a lot of what happens. Uh, I only had a very small experience with game development and there were some times where we did a bit of tough love and this was in fucking post university. This was a game that no, never saw the light of day really truly. Like it saw some people play it and whatnot in our school and whatnot, but we never did anything with it. We never put it on Steam or anything like that. I saw that and it it was rough sometimes, but it needed to happen, otherwise the game wasn't gonna get done. It wasn't gonna work. And the amount of money that was thrown at this game is absurd. The amount of time and effort that was put on by Sony was absurd. The fact that they thought that they could make a game to rival Overwatch, and I don't play Overwatch, but I know how big of an of a phenomenon Overwatch is, and despite all of the clearly greedy practices that Blizzard did with Overwatch 2, it still is a huge hit. Also because they shut down the servers for uh, Overwatch 1, if I'm correct. The idea that they thought that a culture of toxic positivity was a good idea. There's a few things here, like there's one uh, article here from Hitmarker, um, where there was a claim that I, uh, from some people, from uh, Kotaku's Ethan Gatch, I can corroborate uh, the part about the toxic positivity. Some sources I've spoken with blamed a head in the sand mentality carried over from the studio's bungee roots. A sense the game would come together because the team was too good to fail. Yeah, there was probably some bungee heads who I know who had left from Destiny. Um, and you had some good caliber of people, but something that has also been very, very evident with people nowadays is it really does depend who those people are and what they contributed to said projects. And even on that end, the name alone doesn't work because we can't even trust studios anymore. The, the whole thing going on with Dragon Age the Veilguard, not a Dragon Age player myself, going to admit that straight up front, but the the divide of the reviews is huge. You've got people like IGN and I, I think it was Games Radar gave it, uh, I might be wrong about that one, or The Gamer, whichever, gave it like near 9 out of 10, 10 out of 10s, whereas then you have Skill Up and Mr. Maddie, who both want the game to be good, but both have huge criticisms of it. It's not like they're being negative Nancy's in their reviews. Um, they're being really critical uh, to the point where there's just things that are clearly wrong, but that's another side point. The idea that you go through life without taking any criticism is a unhealthy way to go about daily life. Things are not going to be pillowed for you. They're not going to be comforted for you. You will run into harsh things. You'll run into jobs where that suck. You'll run into terrible bosses. You'll run into jobs that don't appreciate you. You'll run into relationships that don't uh, work out. You'll run into people who will maybe backstab is a little harsh, just won't work out for you. They will not be have your self-interests at heart. Um, that it's going to happen. So the idea of putting $400 million into something, just expecting it to work, they just shut down the entire studio and the game is officially dead. There was that weird kind of bit going on where they were uploading stuff onto the Steam pages, like through the Steam code net, but like some people were saying, that might have just been work for them to do while they were waiting for their jobs to, <laughs> while waiting for the statuses of their jobs. All I can say is I'm not surprised. With how this game was handled through its entire development cycle, 
to the fact that they had a huge dislike ratio when it came to the trailer, to the fact that the betas and the alphas were essentially ghost towns. Who on their bingo card had Sony making a bigger oof than Microsoft with Redfall? Because that was our woof for the last year or so. And, you know, being a Microsoft boy, I'm used to being a fucking punching bag. So to see this happen for Sony is like, wow, that's... It feels so nice to not have it be all on, on, on our side of the table for once. I, like I said, there's all the other criticisms and whatnot of what people have said about the, the, game, the, the game's looks, the identity politics and all that. I'm not talking about that. I just wonder what you guys think about the idea of the toxic positivity thing. How do you think that would operate in other jobs. Do you think that criticism is important? Because that is, like when you make a mistake, you gotta own up to it, you gotta accept it. And if someone has a very good point about something of yours that can be made better, you it may hurt, but usually that criticism, while you might not agree with it, there can be some val excuse me, some validation to that criticism. And that can excuse me, working towards improving you at what you do. Or you just put yourself into an echo chamber and you never listen to anyone on the outside and you just immediately write anyone off who has a somewhat different opinion than you. I can understand that because I used to be like that when I was a young 20 year old man and I thought anyone who didn't have the same opinion of me about certain movies was a doof. And go, looking back on those conversations, I think I sound like a bit of a dickwad. <laughs> so, like I said, we can all improve. We can all be better. Anyways, guys, those are my thoughts about it. I, I just wanted to because I'm very curious about what other people's thoughts are about the positivity thing and the criticism thing. Because, yeah, I think criticism is important. I think we need that to be better at what we do. Like, when I do my photo stuff... I'll ask my wife to give me critiques, and I, I was bad at it at first. I will admit, I wasn't the best at taking the criticism, but I realized that I needed to have some outwards looks, and even if I didn't initially agree with what she was saying, there would be some validation to what she gave me, and I'd be like, you know what, okay, maybe maybe I should try it. Let's, let's just try this other way and see what that turns out to be. And whether it worked or not, it still led me down a path of being like, hey, okay, I can be better than just, oh, yeah, that works. I can always try to be better at what I'm doing. Anyways, guys, that's all for me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time.